Hi guys, so today's Busted Out is some stuff that's not super old. Like I bought these from uh, Crafts Companion's website um, in July. Yes, July, last July. So uh, I guess almost a year ago, right? Um, not quite, but almost. And they were Christmas related. Sorry, I asked my kids to be quiet and Miranda just started talking as soon as I start talking. But anyhow, I, so I had these and recently I've been looking around different companies. My goodness. Um, and you know, I've just been looking around for different companies to kind of check out and do things with, you know, Spellbinders has been around for a long time now um, with their dyes and things. And I don't know what happened. I came across or I saw the cabinet or whatever they call these things. And I had, oh, obviously, like I said, I had these for a while and I literally had to look for these for two hours today. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I know where they were. They were in that haul. I went and looked at haul videos. I looked where my receipt might be and kind of had an idea when I ordered it so I can see in the videos, like what it looked like. Cause I thought maybe the packaging, cause the other Sizzix packaging has this blue top too. So I'm like looking at those things. I'm like, I know I ordered with Crafters Companion. Why would I put it away with Crafters Companion things? I finally did find it with the Crafters Companion things, but um, which is kind of a bummer. And in do so doing, I found all kinds of stuff. So I was like, oh, this is the kind of video I should make. But I don't have time to, you know, the kids are here to make videos to show you guys all the things that I have or like the treasures I might find in a drawer or whatever. So um, in the meantime, I found a bunch of other spell binders. So I try to put them all together. Some of the ones I found, I'm like, oh, these are a weird shape. I'm like, whatever, I'm going to put them up with the rest of the spell binders. And then I realized that those shapes actually belong to um, Heartfelt Creation stamps, that they were in the same sp space. I just didn't think that they were together. And then I'm like, oh, okay, no. So I put them back together with the Heartfelt Creation stamps and then the bases that are um or the dies that were spellbinders at the time because i think what they would do is that they would design their stamps around what spellbinders already had like the blossom or um oh, there's a few different uh generic looking you know basic dies and then they would design their stamps to work with them so now obviously they have their own dies but I mean, I don't know who makes them, but they have their own dice <laughs> as far as heartfelt creations. But I found all these things. This is one thing I saw on Spellbinder's website that is on clearance right now. And I'm like, it looks familiar. Yeah, I have it. So I found that. I found this cute fairy. I'm like, oh, maybe I can throw her in somehow. This cute little tree with like little things. I, of course, I have tons of them. I just grab these because I need to put them away. But maybe I'll incorporate these. So long story short, bust it out if you have these. They do have new ones. So this is what happened. I, I don't know how I came up. I guess just looking on their website, I had seen... Um, what they call Grand Cabinet or something. Anyway, I have them on order. So they're newer by Becca Feek. And I like that lady. She looks interesting. I like her style. So I was like, oh, okay. And, um, and she had mentioned that people are already making mini albums from these things. And maybe you've seen them. I have not. I don't even know, you know, what she's talking about. So I did buy the two base, like whatever she calls these things, cabinet designs. And then I did get the, um, this piece that makes the spine of your mini album. If you want to use those mini album. Depending on your website you go to, some of the times people want $30 for that, some people want $25 for it. On um, Spellbinders, if you have not ordered from them, as soon as you sign in, like to say, hi, I'm here, they give you 50% off automatically um, at the end. So it was better for me to buy it there, although you don't need it. You can make that spine by hand. So I'm like, this is kind of interesting because even Becca had said on a video, like I know her, Becca or Mrs. Feekin, I don't know, on um, one of her videos that um, she said, oh, even though you guys have already been doing this, um, they made this spine. So of course, you know, get that money where you can. So the spine, I guess it's like 25 or 30 bucks. You don't need it. You can do it on your own. So in this video, I want to try to make um, a mini album. Just start it up. Why not? And so these are all Christmas related. Um, it says amazing paper um grace which i guess becca must have designed for and then now it says like becca fecan instead but it just depends what you're looking at so this one happens to be grand christmas lattice arch because it comes with christmasy things right but this arch is really pretty actually maybe i'll use this one because it's a very basic shape i don't know because this is also really cute because it's round. But this one has the, well, this has the holly if you're going to use this piece that goes in it. And this one is called Grand Snow Globe, which is, of course, adorable. And this one also um, is Grand Holiday Cabinet. That's what it's called, Grand Cabinet. But this is Grand Holiday Cabinet. And um, this one has a nice design to it, too. But this is kind of prettier, huh? Okay, well, I'll choose one. What I have to do, though, and I'm just going to be honest, is, like, I don't have time to put together a whole mini album, you know, on camera like I would normally do. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to cut a bunch of the pages to have them ready. And, of course, together we will put them together. So I will show you, you know, obviously how to cut them out because there's different um, ways that you can pair these things up. 
and uh, match them up and that'll be really fun. And so yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I haven't made an album in a long time. So basically it's going to look like the card. So the point of these is that you layer them up so it's like a dimensional card, right? And then you're going to have four pages plus the the outer and the back side of it. But um, it's just the same thing. And then Becca had been saying in videos, I think it was like maybe an expo video, that then you can flatten it to send it or, you know, just like a card, but she never actually flattened them. I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see if we can still flatten it. I don't know if that's something that's going to happen. But um, let's get some paper together, or I guess I will um, try to make it kind of sweet. I don't know. Um, and then these all kind of go back into those so if you want to do more designs obviously we just have the blank we have this cute like decoration but these are all Christmassy so I'll tell you what they are the reindeer prance layering set but if this works and makes you a nice mini album and you don't need these you know deck like rain ugh, what am I saying Christmas things um you know you can still get it maybe at a good price because maybe it's on clearance because it's Christmas you know I don't know and I guess these things recently came out I have no idea uh, Santa Claus layering set and the nativity layering set. So I am waiting for, like I said, the basic grand cabinet and then one's taller and one's shorter. Grand arch maybe it's called, I don't know. I'm waiting for those to come in, the spine. But I figure this will get me going and show you guys a little bit about it. So if you care to do that, you know, you can go order them. Um, one other thing is I had ordered the stuff. It gave you an instant discount, but if you sign up for their monthly subscription, subscription, which I didn't know that they had, so guess what? I signed up for it. Um, and you know, it's not bad. So <laughs> they have a mini, um, like a regular dye subscription kit and it's 15 bucks and it includes your uh, shipping, right? Um, and then they have one that's called a large dye and that's usually like a large dye like this kind of thing, you know, like something big. And that's, 30 bucks 27 something yeah 27 something i can't remember and then they have a card kit and the card kits are really cute so i was like i look at the past ones even the one for right now in may so i was like okay i'll i'll just get the one that's all three so basically you order all three kits uh, they have tons of kits they have like foiling and other uh, just um fancy ones uh, or you know what actually that is they have another one that's the apg kit uh, or club and it would be more like this metal die but what I mean by large die is like it's a larger die um, in the large die setup so um, that gives you an extra 10% off of the store so I think I should have gotten into the club and then placed my order because that 10% is automatic like the prices that you see on their website and the 15% off off your first order rings up at the end but you don't see it till the end so I don't know I might mess that one up but oh well I didn't go too crazy. I just, but you know, I, like I said, I ordered the two cabinets plus a couple other things to go along with it. So let's get started. I just want to give you some information in case you're looking for something fun. Again, I got these from Crofters Companion, so you don't have to go to Spellbinders, but um, just go wherever you get the best price. Always, right? That's, that's our motto, isn't it? All right, let me grab some paper and we'll put something together. Okay, so I hope you guys just trust me because <laughs> um, I'm completely making this up off the top of my head. I used to make million albums all the time on here. And actually, I have some in this tub down under me. Um, somebody had asked about that. And I was like, oh, yeah, where do I put them? <laughs> They're literally under my um, uh, stool here. But anyway, um, I'm going to use this matte black cardstock from Crafters Companion. Because you guys know I love this stuff. It's 300 GSM. It's super thick. So I thought that was really good to make the mini album itself with. Because it's going to be nice and sturdy, right? So right now, I'm just grabbing a page of it. Because we're going to need some of this. I am going to use... Um, this die, the uh, Grand Holiday Cabinet, because it's really pretty and I think it's really nice. Uh, the papers I'm going to accent with are from the Enchanted Forest Crafters Companion Pack because it's really pretty and why not, right? These are not thick enough, in my opinion, to make a page. They're a little... They're cardstocky, but they're like Recollections cardstocky feeling, like not super thick. But we will use these in fun ways. And then when I opened up the drawer to get that stuff, because I know where that is, I put it all... Uh, together. Uh, this was in there from so and the So Homemade uh, kit and I thought that was kind of cute. Maybe I'll use some uh, of the twine there. And um, But the first thing before I start cutting on my own and then come back is that we need to make a spine. Now the spine I am making is only really going to end up being an inch wide because I'm going to do five pages. So front cover, front and back of it, right? Three pages in the middle and then one on the back. So you know this is not going to take too long hopefully to make. So um, I'm going to have the link here for a Becca Feekin video where she does such an amazing job. It's actually funny. Her table looks like mine. Like if I move this, you can see the wood from, uh, well, I can't do it right now. But you would see the wood from the husky table that I have down here. I'm like, hey, it looks just like my table. Maybe I should do that whenever I do like, that's what I should do. So it looks pretty for you guys. Uh, when I do like uh, hauls, I can just move this 
Anyway, that's a, a story for another time. So my wood table in here, and it looked a lot like that. But she had like all the iterations you can do with this. Because you can cut just the page or the background, right? You can cut uh, this guy into it. You can cut this die part into that so it makes a frame you can cut the die without this middle part you can you know what i'm saying like you know do it all for the way you say here the outer the inner this frame but then uh, it's gonna cut out this guy so you leave this out and you leave this cut into it like there's all kinds of stuff you can do and obviously this is a little extra um, guy here so if you measure the width of this this is like an inch and a half so if you want to have a spine that's just the same width as what you, you would normally have on the sides of these cabinet things you're gonna have to cut at least two more pages so your book's gonna have to be like seven pages or so i don't want that many pages so i am obviously we have to make our own spine anyway so it doesn't matter now i don't know why i put my guillotine over here i need it so I actually wrote numbers down you guys that's how you know I'm serious here that's what I'm saying I hope you guys trust me I did math and to be honest I rather have uh, one sixteenth of an inch measurements to make it really precise so that when we do this um, our little binding it'll just work but I, you know it's hard to find a sixteenth inch uh, scoring board that has them that tight right so uh, I'm just going to go with eighths and quarter of inches, so it's basically going to be quarter inches. So it's easier to explain, but it's not going to be as exact as if I had done it in sixteenths, okay? So we need this to be three and a quarter by four and a half. So three and a quarter by four and a half. And this paper is super thick, so um, hopefully I don't regret this. Let's see. You always want something nice and thick and people used to back in the day if you guys remember when you used to make your books back in the day we would like to um also use tyvek um stuff it's basically the same stuff that envelopes are made out of at the post office and i don't mean just any envelope but that kind that's kind of like soft um and people would take them and cut them up and they say don't do that but i'm gonna do it you know because <laughs> You're supposed to use it for mail, right? But anyway, it's that material. You can buy it too, that material. But obviously at the post office, you got them for free. So all we're going to do, again, four and a half by three and a quarter every quarter inch. So I'm going to start on this outer edge just because it's easier for me to hold this. But I'm going to score this really well because this paper is super thick. Again, maybe I should have used something else. But I want it to last. So every quarter inch, we are going to score. Okay? All across. So I will be back once I'm done scoring okay. up to the edge here. So, now, if you were to order the uh, die, it's a big, thick die, right? That just pushes in here, and it does some different things for you. But we're going to have to listen here, because we're doing it by hand. So this front first piece, this first quarter inch, I'm folding up. Because that's going to hold our first page, the front and back of our first page. Boop, boop. We're going to leave this quarter inch alone, because that's going to be the in between the two pages. But... The next set of, so we're going to leave that guy alone, or you can fold it if you want. But basically, between, see what, line one, this is actually line two, line three, and line four. Okay, line two, line three, and line four. In between there, we have this middle line, which would be line three. We're going to fold that one up. And then at this point, you can just kind of fold that first line back if you want. It doesn't matter. But just know line three needs to fold up. It's a mountain fold, because... We're going to glue that together, and that's going to be the little area that our page two, you know, cover page two or page one, however you want to call it, is going to hold on to here. Hopefully you can see that. See, we're going to glue this in the back. So again, we're not, this fold, let's leave it alone. So that's line one, line two, line three, line four, right? So we fold it on line three, up, line five, line six, nine, seven. Five, six, seven. If you want to number them, just know that. So five, so six is gonna go up. So basically, every other time you do this, you're gonna put that one up. So I've seen in sets of three is kind of how I look at it. So again, fold back that line five and then line seven. Just fold in the other direction. So when we glue that together, that's gonna be another place where you're gonna hold pages right here. Okay. So I hope you see what's going on. We said that seven. So this is eight, nine, ten. So we're gonna fold nine. So do you see the pattern there? I said every three pages, so three, six, nine. Is gonna go up and then again fold it back on that base and fold this back on this base. Ten, eleven, twelve. 
And this one, hold on. Okay, I told you guys to trust me, but you shouldn't have trusted me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a little extra piece of paper here at the end, so we don't need that last piece. Because, well, I mean, you could use it. It's because when I did my calculation in my head, I was thinking about how we make these little guys. So don't do uh, three and a quarter. Just do three inches, okay? Because this last quarter inch piece, we don't need it. So I'm just going to cut it off. I will have it, and I'll have corrected myself earlier because I always do that. I'll go back and say, no, don't do that. Do three inches or whatever. So that's gone. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. And once it's all glued, and if you measure this back piece, it's going to be one inch wide. Okay, so that'll be just for later. So right now what we're going to do is glue, 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 and generously. Now, I'm going to use my tacky glue because it dries kind of fast, and I don't care. It's going to be on the back. We're not going to see it. Again, if you want to make this spine as wide as that little spine that we have there, you probably need to go three inches okay so every time we do this we're adding a quarter plus another half so you need at least um three quarter another inch and a half you know so it'd be four and a half by four and a half and then again score every quarter inch and do all this kind of thing i'm holding it from down here at the bottom but you can lay it down in a minute because this is going to be glue 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 now if you want to use red line glue go for it the adhesive i just feel like after a while it does open this glue will not unless it rips right <laughs> unless your page rips this glue will not come apart if you have uh, what are those things called clothes pins that would help too if you didn't want to keep holding it but tacky glue dries pretty quickly so that's kind of why i like that or at least it sets up kind of quickly it might not be dry but again bring those two edges together and back in the day i would like completely smash this down <laughs> i'm just trying to hold them right now just to kind of show you so we're on we're working on the back side right now because we're just trying to put their glue in and then that last ridge i should probably be patient and do one at a time but i want to show you guys what i'm trying to do and then i'll move on so again in that last ridge that we created and from this side if you really wanted to you can just kind of come over here see what you're doing and just kind of flatten it. If you flatten it like this, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I flattened it so I can just make sure the glue is holding together. See? I'm just laying them over. Just push them to the side. Again, for the same reason that you're supposed to be able to collapse the mini album, you can collapse the spine. You should be able to do this. And if you look on the back side, you'll see the glue maybe squeeze out, but no, it's not bad. Again, Crafter's Companion, they're, um, Precious moments, precious memories, whatever they call it. Uh, I know the name keeps changing there. Um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, but we just did it by hand. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave this sitting here like this with a nice weight on it. Some kind of weight. Is this heavy enough? Maybe this. And this guy. This guy and this guy. <laughs> and for good measure, this guy too. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes and... Um, We'll continue on. Okay, you know what? While that's drying, I guess I can, I can just move on. I don't know why I feel like I have to wait for that in real time. So I just measured this. This is literally, these little tabs are the only thing that's wider than your marquee. So this does not go through the marquee. It does not go through the Empress Mini. It does not go through the Gemini Mini or the Gemini Go, okay? So you need a machine that's gonna take a little bit wider space. All the machines, you you know, Cuddlebug, Gemini, all those good, uh, good machine. So I'm going to put this away for now. I'm hoping I can get this done in one video. I do not know because normally mini albums take a long time. And, you know, I've been trying to make videos all day and my neighbor has somebody doing some kind of work out there. It's so loud. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for the front cover uh, I'm going to do two pages obviously we need two we need a front and a back side because we're going to sandwich them basically that's how you make your pages so i'm going to take this i would try to maximize my paper of course because it's not inexpensive i mean i have tons of it but you know you always want to maximize your paper put these here to be honest we don't need the little tab so if it helps you to save paper to put the tab off the side then that's fine we're going to cut those tabs off anyway i just want to see how wide this needs to be so i can cut you can probably get two pages from each uh, page there. So that's kind of a bummer because you're going to have to use a lot of paper. Um, 
well, five sheets of paper, right? <laughs> we need five pages, they each make two. Okay, so this will kind of show you. I'm gonna cut this twice. So I'm gonna cut it right now once. Oh, see, see, no, I better put more tape just in case. So we're gonna cut the cabinet one time. I don't think I need much more than these layers because it's not super, I mean, it's um, intricate, but for the Gemini, that should be okay. But if you find it's not cutting quite right, you might want to use your metal shim too. That sounded great. Let me see, is that cut all the way through? It's hard for me to tell. It looks like it is, but not quite. I'm gonna do it one more time. And we are gonna put in our metal shim. Again, it's always better to start off with less pressure and build up if you don't need the extra pressure. That didn't look like it cut all the way through. Ooh, you hear that? That's kind of what I like to avoid. It's kind of struggling. <laughs> Okay, let me see here. So what I'm gonna show you is what this page looks like. Obviously, I'm also gonna cut a frame because I want I wanted the, the front to be see-through it, but at the same time, maybe not, huh? Let's leave the front solid. And you know why? Because um, that way on the inside, we'll have something to play with. So I am gonna leave this like this, but we could have cut this aperture into it too if you want. What I'm gonna do is cut the aperture with some of the pretty paper, so we'll do that. But I'm gonna cut another one just like this, okay? And I will be okay. right back. And do yourself a favor, make sure to clean this thing out every time you go to use it, because I didn't clean it out from that last one and a bunch of pieces did not cut. And I realized, because this is so thick, if it gets in there, in the uh, die, the die has no like real way to kind of make up for that. Even this little piece is still kind of acting funny, but I'll get it out. I'll get that out. Uh, but yeah, so for sure <laughs> Clean your die and what I mean by that is after you're done cutting oh, yeah, yeah. All These little first thing pieces go in there and clean that thing out because I don't know if you can see there's a bunch of black pieces still stuck in here I don't know. It might be hard to see but they are definitely in there. Okay So for right now, this is all we need For page one. So basically we're gonna sandwich these together now This is what I was fearing. I'm like are they exactly the same or are they a little bit different one side from the other? interesting Yes, perfect. Oh, they're exactly the same. Do you see that? You can see right through. So if they if they weren't, the other thing you can do is just layer one on top of the other. But then you know the, the back side is kind of ugly, the cut side. So you want to always cover that up. So let me pick everything out of these things and see if my spine is dry, and we will get going. Okay, I think my spine. I mean, it's not 100% dry, but it's workable. I hope you can see that the back is just like this. It doesn't look like anything pretty. The front piece again. I kind of laid that down, but you can kind of move them back. And I would actually make go ahead and practice doing that so that the spine knows what to do, right? Like, okay. How come I got so dark all of a sudden? <laughs> it still looked really dark to me. I guess it's not, but okay. Again, that's the spine. If you measure this, it's about one inch. That doesn't really matter because we're just going to do what we have to do, but okay. So again, back to back, you're going to stick this together and you can what I was planning on doing was basically cutting these off at the same time. So let me get this little guy. But you can use an exacto, you can use your scissors. I'm just trying to be like a little extra here. So I will put these down. Those are about the same. This is a cute little set I got from, um, I think Tuesday morning one time. It's just a little We Are Memory Keepers um, cutting mat and uh, ruler. And basically, I'm going to cut both these off if I can. Oh my gosh. You know what? Just use your scissors. <laughs> this is like... Come on. There we go. And you need to cut the tabs off of both sides, basically. Off this side and off the opposite side, because you don't need them. Um, if you're using this to make your... Here. This is a, from the paper studio, which is from Hobby Lobby, and I don't know. It swivels, and it's the worst. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm just going to give up on that. Let's use scissors, guys. I just wanted it to be super smooth, but you know what? You can just come in with your scissors here and make it super smooth, too, so don't worry about that. 
Boom. All right, that was probably worked 10 times better. This is very adorable, but that paper trimmer was not working for me. All right, let's get that out of the way. Maybe throw it away. And what we're gonna do is stick these two together on the first little thing here. Now you can make all your pages, but like the reason I'm doing this right now this way is because I don't have, again, the precious time to share with you guys for me to do every single page on camera. So I'm just showing you the idea. So then you would put this together here. And that is page one, it's your front cover, right? So I, I'm gonna stick this down with you guys. I'm just not gonna continue um, the rest of them. When I come back, I'll have all the other pages cut and like the embellishments that are gonna go with them, which isn't like so many embellishments, but um, we will see. So what was interesting when I was watching Becca's video, she had, um, she just did this and then this on the other side, but then she, she said, just stick this top part together like just a little bit just to get it held together but at the same time I think you should put more glue than that especially if it's a mini album people are going to be using it you don't know I just rather put a little more glue than necessary so I'm putting glue all over this right you saw where I put it and I'm using a fine precision tip just so I can kind of get in there easier run it through your um fisker not fiskers your uh What's that thing called? Your Xyron, however you like. On this side, all you have to do is put it on the edge because we're gonna use this for the binding. So make sure that it has plenty of glue, actually. I should. If you wanna use, again, red liner glue or whatever glue you like to use on that side, do that. I'm gonna start with this side because it has less glue and I don't have to like mess with it <laughs> while it's trying to dry. So this is a little bit persnickety, you guys, but it'll be fine. So hopefully you can see that. I'm putting on that first little piece that's just on its own. If you want that sturdier and you want to fold it back like I did earlier and I cut that piece off because I didn't need it to fold back, you can fold it back and then add glue on this back side, right? If you want like a sturdier piece in the front here. But I'm just trying to make sure this is straight. Again, that tacky glue dries pretty quick so it's easy to... You can still maneuver a little bit, but it's nice. I'm going to put this down flat. And I'm going to take this guy and put it right up on the edge. We're still going to make a little bit binding for the edge, so don't worry about how, or the binding, should I say. It doesn't look very pretty right now. And I'm just going to lay that down. I'm just making sure all these little curly cues are the same. Or trying to make sure. <laughs> I said that. I'm telling you, tacky glue is great, but at the same time, it does dry pretty fast, guys. <laughs> it wants to hold on pretty quick, so make sure it's where you want it. And that is your page one. Isn't that cool? Or your front cover. Okay, I'm going to cut out the four more pages. The back cover is going to be exactly the same. I'm not going to do anything funky with it as far as like making a hole or anything. But I think for the second, maybe third, fourth pages, we'll see. If it's a mini album, you're going to put pictures in it. So, you know, say if you're looking through and there's a picture there obstructing or there's no reason to put another aperture behind that. So I might do aperture, the middle page, maybe just solid and then another aperture page because otherwise you can't put pictures in it, right? I mean, you're gonna put pictures on this back cover, on the back of the front, and the front of the back. So do whatever you like, whatever combination of papers and pages, and I will be right I'm back. I'm just plugging right along as you can see all these things here. I have my second page ready, but what I'm gonna do is cut an aperture into it, and just a complete hole. Actually, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So I'm just gonna do this, but I'm gonna eyeball it, get it put in there. I don't think I can run it through at the same time because I have a feeling um, it's too thick. This stuff is super thick as it is. So I'm just gonna do one at a time and I'll kind of try and make sure that they're both about the same as it goes through. And that's my second page. So just run it through and I'm just coming in to say hi about that because I'm gonna do that for this one. Mostly tape it to the inside so that way when this rips away, it doesn't rip away <laughs> uh, my nice stuff. What I'm gonna also do is probably run one through with just this part because it's really cute, kind of decorative. And again, it doesn't really look like icicles to me or anything too Christmassy. I think it's just a fun decoration. So um, on the middle page, I'm going to run this through so you can still see through it, um, through that aperture, okay? So this just came out super easy. A little glue there. So again, put these two together, cut off those little edges, and um, you know, make sure they're nice and lined up. Again, let's do it with our scissors because my stuff's getting kind of wonky. Um, what I wanted to mention though, real quick, is um, 
you can make pockets on the top. You just don't glue the top together. Just like we used to do back in the day with all of our envelope minis, any other mini. Just don't glue this top part. Obviously this one's not going to be a pocket because it's open up like this. But let's say you had another page like this one or a page that's just solid that doesn't have this cute little um, stuff in there. Uh, just leave the top open. So adhere it on the sides, adhere it up here at the bottom and the other side. But leave the top open, you can make a pocket so you can slide something in there, or, you know, a nice little tag. Okay, so I'm going to cut the other piece off and again, just glue them here. Actually, maybe I'll do that. Well, let me cut this off because I know my kids aren't expecting me to be filming right now, so they might say something. Uh, be a little, let's just try it and, you know, hear my neighbor's dogs having a good old time. <laughs> Alright. So again with these, of course, I left this, we were just talking about glue that doesn't clog and I've never had a glue that clogs other than my 3D glue gel, it's so bad. Okay, again, I want to glue this together very well. Again, Becca says just put it gingerly here and there, but I really do want this to stay together. So I'm just going to put this on here. Now you see what I'm saying? If this is a mini album, it kind of makes it so that... Um, you can't really put anything here. What I would do here is just, we're going to do that in a minute, is um, just put some kind of decoration that kind of maybe hangs over a little bit into the aperture. But other than that, it's not like you're going to put pictures because <laughs> you don't have a lot of uh, room for that. But let me get this kind of centered. I'm kind of buttoning up all the way down to the base of the spine and putting it in that second little area that's... I'm going to hold it just for a second just so it kind of stays, but I'm also going to make sure that this thing is, oopsie, see, so it stays just like that. I just want to make sure that they're the same here. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. That's about right. Okay. I just want to make sure it's in the right spot up and down, right? You can kind of judge obviously by the edge or the base of your, your spine, but that's, I just want to make sure it's about right, right there. And let's get this guy. And this is the part they don't ever show you on these videos because it's not that easy. <laughs> I'm going to have to bring these two together, fight with my tacky glue, and get it going. So what Becca did, she kind of just stuck these base pieces together down here first. And that's kind of why she just ran the glue up the side and not too much because it was harder to get in there, right? But to me, I think just put the glue on at the beginning like I've been showing you and then do this. And I think it's pretty good. I'm sorry guys for all the extra noise around here. Okay, I'm going to keep holding this until it stays because, again, it's a wet glue. But look at that. Super cute. As I hold this, I just want to make sure that you guys really see that I'm buttoning it up as far to the uh, base as I can get it, right? So that's important. And you know what? It's not too bad with the quarter inch um, little flaps. Because I thought, oh, you might be able to see it a lot, but you don't really see it at all. So. I was going to do 3 sixteenths, you guys, so if you just don't want to do 3 sixteenths, that's up to you, but a quarter inch uh, little flaps isn't too bad. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next page. Of course, on the next one, like I said, I am only going to cut in here this cute little aperture. So I'm not going to cut out this hole, but I am going to put this in here. So that's going to make like a little beading looking thing on the next page. You guys, I'm on the third page. I just wanted to show you something really quickly. So um, I have this little pretty thing. Look how pretty it cuts out so delicately. Yeah, I got a little over glue there. And you might hear some of the kids in the background. So I'm just going to talk about this real quick. I took some stickles and I was debating doing this now or after when I put the book together, you know, put it together and then do this. But I don't want to wait for each page. So I'm going to let this dry. And um, so before I had done that, what I was talking about was that I'm going to hold this on here with the back, you know, wrong sides facing. And basically, um, this is not the same. You know what I'm saying? It's not lined up the same from here to here. So you, if you were to cut this on this side, it's not going to work. So you have to kind of eyeball it from this side. So what I'm going to do is just kind of trace this frame here, just this outer part. And I'm going to cut this into this. And kind of line up right on that, that line if I can see it as well as I can, right? You know, I mean, I can barely see that line, but at the same time... It gives me a little bit of knowing that that might be where I should go ahead and cut this. I'm going to do that and I'll also stickle this side, right, the right side. And um, Okay guys, so I did the 
uh, the, I'm waiting for the third page because it needs to dry, but I did the fourth page exactly like I did the second one. And I'm going to do the last page. The last page is just going to be this outer frame, thank goodness, because I'm so tired of cleaning this thing out. Um, <laughs> it doesn't take a lot, but it still is something. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I printed this up probably, maybe it's taken me an hour, maybe. I'm going to pick a piece of paper from here that looks nice because that's going to be something that you can see through all the way from the front of your book, right? You're going to be able to see that back page. Not the very front because, well, a little bit of that. Um, and then I'm going to cut one in black. So one in a cute color and one in okay, black. And, and I'll be plugging right along. This was great, this last one, because, <laughs> again, nothing much to do. So this will be the very back. Now, there's a couple things. Obviously, I'm just getting this done kind of basic so you guys can see. You can do this, what I showed you with the spine, with any die. Let's say you just have some nesting dies. Use the biggest one, a bigger one, and a smaller one. But just make your pages, right? Just like this. If it was a nesting die that was like a hexagon shape or whatever, a nice scalloped shape. Um, just use that, okay? And then do the same spine. You might have to measure a little bit differently the, the height of your spine, but the rest of it will be the same. So I'm gonna layer this on top of this, and that's gonna be the book. So when you open it up, you're gonna see through to the back. I'm still waiting for this guy to dry, so whenever he's ready, I'm gonna stick him in here, as you can see there. <gasps> How pretty is that? Okay, but um, what I wanna say, Again, super basic, I just want to get the construction of the book down. But let's say you wanted to put a ribbon closure in here. You could tie a ribbon, make sure it, before you glue this down, put the piece of ribbon going through here in between the two pieces so it's secured inside. It's gonna go around this spine, which we're gonna cover later. And then you can bring it to the front or you could have um, gone ahead and glued that piece of ribbon in between here too. Or right now when I do a topper for this, you can just, again, let the ribbon come out of the spine and then go through here, put the topper on so the ribbon at least is secured a little bit more underneath the topper. And what I mean by topper is, um, I'm just gonna cut some of the um, paper out of with this die. Okay, so this die is obviously in the kit. And I just cut a nice piece of paper, put that on here so we can put our title or a picture or whatever we're gonna do, flowers, um, you can put the ribbon underneath there. So then the ribbon comes out from back here and you tie it up to close it if you wanna do that. If you don't wanna close it, you don't have to. I'm just kind of spitballing, throwing out some ideas there. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna leave my book open, just leave it alone. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on the very back piece and that'll be it. So when I come back, I'm gonna have this stuck down and then that middle uh, page okay, stuck so down. I'm putting that third page, but as I'm cutting pieces again, like I said, I was gonna use that die to just cut some of the paper. So I'm just gonna take this midnight and just kind of um, ink around the edges. And I'm gonna also ink around that last page. I probably should have done it before I put it in, but I'm just gonna go in and um, use probably some purple and go around this too. And so this is the one for this side, and this is the one for this side. And I will have those stuck down. Okay, so I left this drying overnight just so that this can get really good dry. It was already kind of dry when I finished up. Look how cute. I didn't even glue these two together, but you can if you want to put glue on those. I just left it the way it is. Um, but I just left it like this. <laughs> so um, here's our book. Look at that. So there's the front, obviously page. And when you open it, you see through. Now this is one. And so on these, I mean, if you're going to put a picture or if you wanted to stick the picture in between the two, right? A picture on either side. You could do that. You have to have a really small margin around the picture so it doesn't show through too much. Or you place things in a way that it works. So, um, you know, as far as mini album, you can do different things. Obviously, you can make this with just squares. Let's say you had five inch squares, six inch squares. Just do the, the back the same. It's going to be five inches tall, but then still do your three inch uh, binding, you know, piece, quarter inch um, increments all across and then stick it together right with your two squares on either little tab you don't have to have this fancy uh, die but really cute so I'm probably just gonna decorate a little bit what I figured is this is the place you can have the biggest picture if you're gonna put a picture in um, but I have that spellbinders fair I don't know if she's too big I can't tell how big she is but we will try that or you know I have some really cute like uh, glittery paper some shimmery paper I have um, this is all from Crafters Companion, that paper. I have that twine. I have more Crafters Companion paper that's shimmery or glittery. And then I went and looked at my stash and grabbed the whole kit from Enchanted Forest. So we have these little fairies that are perfect size. So I think I'm going to decorate with some of these guys. And, yeah, there's some stamps. 
Um, I don't know if I'll be using stamps though because everything's pretty dark. If I was going to plan some stamping, I probably would have stamped and done some embossing or something like that. This one right here, you can just lay it flat. It, all the pages you can lay flat. Let's say when you go to decorate later, let's say I do want to stamp on this, just lay it flat. Stamp. And um, that's the other thing. Let's see about laying this thing flat because supposedly you can flatten it out to mail, right? It, it's a little tight. But that's pretty flat. Of course, if you have flowers and stuff in there, it's going to make it a little different. I don't know if it bends the other way, but I would say flatten it this way. But we are also going to put a spine on this. So my spine is going to be really, really simple. I'll probably do all the decorating off um, camera. But just so you know, um, I don't mean off camera, but like maybe sped up or something like that. Because the point of this was more the... Um, the base of the book. So remember, this makes five pages, you know, if you're kind of front and the last page. If you want six, you need to add another three quarter inches to the back of your spine. So our spine for this particular die had to be four and a half inches tall and three inches wide, score to every quarter inch. If you have the smaller cabinet, because there are smaller ones like this guy, it's a little bit lower. What you're going to do, or this one's higher, right? So all you have to do on these guys or any of your uh, dies if you're using nesting dies is measure exactly how tall it is so from the cutting line or you can cut these out first and then measure whatever's cut out right um, but I just did this first so it's like five and one eighth so it has to be about five inches tall or five and one eighth if you want to cover the whole five and one eighth and then three inches wide um, so just measure it like this one it would be from here to here right it's this spot it's not all the way to the top you're only putting a spine here so um, it's about three and three quarter inches tall and then three inches wide. If you want more pages, add another three quarter inch for each page you're adding. Okay, so for my spine, I'm just gonna pick a color. Oh, I should have already done this. I wasn't gonna work on this right now. Um, what's a bummer is <laughs> I would love to use some of that sparkly paper or something else, but this Martha Stewart punch will not go through. It wouldn't even go through this black paper. So it has to be some other paper. Ooh. Oh, that's a bummer. I was gonna say I have this extra piece, but it's not oriented the right way. Let me grab my, oh, here it is. Oh, and this is the other thing. I would have used this page. This is a six by six, because I thought I had a smaller one, but then I thought this is small already. It's because she made a six by six and an eight by eight. I should have used a six by six, because the pattern on this is smaller, you know? So it's better for like a book. But I did what I did, so <laughs> we're fine. Um, trying to pick. Maybe this one. So I need this one to be um, four and a half by two and a half. So I want this side, I want it to be two and a half inches by four and a half. And then um, the reason I did that is because I wanted an inch for the back and I need a little extra, right? And if you come in and you have one of these things, what I do is I measure from the base to here and that's three quarter inches. So it doesn't chop away three quarter inches. It does take away a little bit at the tip, but you need at least three quarter inches of your paper to go in there. So you have to do your adjustments on that or think about it that way. So with these Martha Stewart punches or any of these paper punches, you start in the middle. That just looks the nicest. And then you can move over to the sides. That's probably okay. I don't need to... Do any more on that. This little piece right here, just boop. And do the same thing for the other side. I hope you guys like this tutorial, even though um, I hope I wasn't sounding too rushed. Like I said, the kids were here, they were talking in the background. Hopefully you don't hear them too much. A lot of times when I edit, people are like, I didn't hear anything. I'm like, really? Because when they're right next to me, I can hear them really well, obviously. But let's make sure that I didn't move because it moved on the other one. Okay. And basically, we're going to stick this down. Now, this is up to you. You can come in and actually score it. Where is my, my score pal? So this is a really quick little book. If you guys were confused when I talk about making your own, um, I can make another video if you want. So this is about almost half an inch. But what I'm going to do is put my score lines and see where the little ruffle ends. That's pretty much where you want to score. And I'm not scoring really hard, just at the end of there. And that should leave me about an inch, because if you see half an inch, half an inch, yeah, that leaves about an inch. And that's some really good calculation right there. Now, you can actually fold it, 
or just have an idea of that's where you want to fold it. So these are the two different ways, or I mean, there's lots of different ways you can bind. If you still want to put some ribbon and you didn't put it in the book, you can do it now. Just add a ribbon that's just going to be kind of floppy that goes through under here and then held down by this, right? But I'm going to leave it just open. So my binding, this is the other thing. Do you want to put glue all over this and stick this to here? Which I'm probably going to do because this is thinner paper. If this was thicker paper, like the black paper, I probably wouldn't even stick it down there because, you know, it just looks nicer. Maybe let that do its own thing and then just let this kind of be out here. And then if you're going to do that, all you have to do is put glue on this and hold it down from here and here. Just glue on the very edges and stick it down. But since I'm going to do a little different, I'm going to glue it down completely. And I'm going to use my call out because it still gives a little bit of stretch even when it dries. And that way, obviously my paper's not going to warp. That's the other thing. If we use tacky glue right now, my little paper might warp really badly. I'm going to put the glue on here. It'd be easier than to put it on the frill. Just lots of glue, guys. And you saw I straightened the spine really good, really well. Oh, if you want to uh, distress this at all, I, I should do that <laughs> real quick. Let me see if there's, I think I cleaned this off last night. Yeah, there's nothing left on this. I just grabbed my midnight. Oh, that's great. Put some glue on my, uh, what's it called? Score pal. Good thing about this glue is that it stays kind of rubbery if it's just out in the air and you can just rub it right off. If you want to put some words on this to stamp it or um, cute little like, braiding or something that's on that spine just to be decorative that'd be great okay so i'm going to massage this for a little while to make sure it's straight <laughs> clean that glue off in a minute here see it's nice and straight so again i'll continue working on this off camera but i hope you guys liked the tutorial Again, I don't think anyone's going to jump right on it as I'm talking, so of course you'll have made your spine the right size, which is four and a half by three for this particular uh, die, right? So again, if your die is shorter than that, it should probably not be shorter unless you're making a really tiny book. But um, if you have like, um, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> what it is. It's how tall your, your edge of your die is, right? So I'm going to continue just holding this until it dries up. If you wanted to put... Um, a back like the same like I did on here however you want you know you can do three pages you can put just a um, a decorative one back here or however you like so I'm gonna hold this until it dries a little bit longer but hope you guys like it and I'll continue decorating it and I'll have some pictures for you so thanks for watching guys keep an eye out for the next ones whenever that spellbinders come in it's kind of funny somebody left me a comment yesterday saying have you ever ordered from spellbinders and I'm like that's funny you ask because that's the first time and she said she ordered her stuff like April 24th and it still hasn't shipped or anything so I know there's issues obviously but that's kind of a long time <laughs> so anyway guys thanks for watching I'll see you at the next one bye now guys I'm sorry I keep going like going back and forth but I do want to show you because I'm gonna decorate this on my own but um just it came out I mean really cute so again if you're making this a mini album where you're gonna put pictures I would do more solid pages than this kind of see-through stuff but um you can also cut like die cut like let's say a heart or something and you would do the same thing for the other side and stick one on this side stick one on this side have the picture be the heart or uh, oval shape or the same shape you know well, however just make sure whatever is uh, on this back side you're gonna see it from this side so you want to make sure that there's something covering there but you know you have your little areas here and I just want to show you real quick the things I'm gonna be using again are items from Enchanted Christmas I already have them opened up I have some scrap papers here I'm gonna see how big this fairy is I have some extra black paper I have all this shiny paper so I'm just gonna cut 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 make a ton of flowers and little things that we can decorate with and um, and that'll be it so um, I just want to come back and just in case it wasn't clear kind of what I was saying before because I don't even remember what I was saying before to be honest but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and decorate this all up and um, it was really fun again let me know if you are interested in um, me doing this kind of thing with just a regular like nesting die so you can kind of see how to work that if you don't have these uh, particular brand okay all right guys thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one and just keep an eye out right now I'm gonna start decorating this